fiber friends, Sarah here. Uh, welcome up to my living room by my fireplace. Um, and today I just want to give you guys a quick update on some of my Tour de Fleece spinning, whether I thought Tour de Fleece was a success this year, and on my chemotherapy cancer journey this summer so far. So if you don't mind me, I've got my spinning wheel here. I'm going to spin and we're going to chat. So come join on in. All right, so let's grab a bump of fiber and get started with the spinning. And I guess, uh, elephant in the room, we'll talk about my Tour de Fleece spin first, since clearly I did not achieve my goals that I set at the onset of the Tour de Fleece. So let's just join in. So for those of you who might be unfamiliar with the idea of the Tour de Fleece, I have to assume that you are familiar with the Tour de France. Uh, being the road cycling race that takes place every July um, throughout, uh, throughout or across France. I'm actually not particularly familiar with the route that they take um, or anything about the cycling world um, in general or in specific. But the Tour de Fleece is a long-standing tradition that we hand spinners have of trying to spin yarn every day that the Tour de France rides. Um, and I've got Tour de Fleece videos on my channel dating back to when I very first started posting on YouTube, uh, I think circa 2015. Um, and I, most years, do sort of embark on attempting to complete a Tour de Fleece, and I never actually have. I always pitter out, or life happens, or something happens, uh, you know, partway through. And this year proved to be no exception. Um, initially, I thought that since the Tour de Fleece took place from, I believe, the first day was July 1st through to July 23rd, um, and I had my fourth round of chemotherapy starting on July 1st, I sort of, I don't know if naively is the right word, I was hopeful or had the idea that I would spin and make a little video sort of vlog of my spinning as well as my progression um, through a typical round of chemotherapy for me. Now that uh, plan was immediately axed as it became very obvious that um, if I can't complete a tour de fleece in a non-chemotherapy year with the busyness of my life and my propensity to get distracted onto other projects, um, who was I thinking I was going to do it in a uh, chemotherapy year. So, you know, I think I made it a couple days and then my response to chemotherapy is usually like two days after transfusion are fine and then a week that is really quite bad. So that plan fell apart. Um, the spinning that I planned to do for the Tour de Fleece though was this project here. And I did finish up two skeins. And I do have probably half of my fiber still to go here in this basket. Um, and this is a sweater spin that I'm doing. I will link up the video below where I prepped the fiber for this spin. Uh, what I did was I had four braids of a absolutely um, beautiful piece of, uh, of indie dye fiber, uh, Cloud9 Fiberworks, I believe, and I needed to supplement that with some fiber from my stash, and then card it up on my drum carder in a way that would create a more homogeneous blend of colors so that I could spin and subsequently knit a sweater from this yarn. So my initial Tour de Fleece plan was, like I said, to complete it, spin each day that the tour rides, and film it, uh, along with vlogging my chemotherapy journey, and you know, the plan was that it would be this, the sweater spin. And so when it became obvious that I was not going to successfully spin every day, I reframed. Sorry, if you can hear my chickens are freaking out a little bit out there right now, which usually doesn't mean anything more than one of them is surprised to find yourself laying an egg. But I might throw eyes on them just in case a cat or something is bothering them. No, it does just sound like egg song. <laughs> Um, because it's just one of the hens. I don't hear the rooster or anybody else making that commotion. Anyways, train of thought. 
So I reframed my goals to just complete the sweater spin during the tour because that felt potentially achievable. Um, and uh, and I mean, I, I do want, I want to finish this sweater spin. I don't want it to be a languishing project. So I kept spinning and I filled up three bobbins because I'm doing a three ply, um, a three ply yarn. And I plied off two full skeins, which emptied out those bobbins. And then Andrew and Mahori went ahead and released her Rhinebeck sweater patterns for this year. And that would be the tessellated pullover and the tessellated vest. So let me stop spinning for a second here so that I can show you what became of my um, determination to stay focused on this project. Because the second that Andrew Mallory released those patterns, I absolutely knew that I wanted to knit it. I wanted to knit the vest. I knew probably which yarns for my stash I would use and that I would want to spin a yarn. So this does have its own video um, and I will link that video below. This is my most recent spinning video actually on my channel. So I won't go too far into it, but long story short is I dropped my sweater spin plan in favor of spinning up a spin cycle dyed in the wool style yarn. So that's this cake here and this little bit of leftover braid, um, not braid, this leftover skein because uh, I had way too much fiber to fit all of my plied yarn onto one bobbin. So my creative energy that was previously focused on this sweater spin became completely focused on this project here. I spun it, uh, I think over the course of maybe two and a half days. I finished the yarn right away and swatched right away and didn't even finish the knits that I was working on in favor of casting on right away. And then I spent entirely too much time knitting it and quite honestly the spinning energy in July ended up diverted primarily into this knitting project. So that's where we are with that. Now would I say that Tour de Fleece ended up being a bust? Was it a success or a failure this year? So I guess in order to answer whether Tour de Fleece for me was a success or a failure this year, we would have to sort of establish what I would be judging that on. If it's purely on did I spin every day that the tour rode? Absolutely. Total failure. Uh, yet again, I have embarked on the tour and um, spotted squirrels off the side of the road, crashed my bike, and decided to go pursue those squirrels on foot rather than hop back on my bike. So from the perspective of spin every day, was it a success? No. Uh, from my goal of complete the sweater spin, was the Tour de Fleece this year a success? No. I mean, I've got two full skeins of yarn, uh, I probably need six. So, again, not a success. But was the Tour successful for me personally this year? And I'm gonna have to say yes, because uh, this year I wanted to get my spinning mojo back, um, setting that sort of initial idea of trying to spin 23 skeins of yarn this year um, has helped getting back into uh, more routine or regular YouTube filming has helped as well. But Tour de Fleece really has been my most productive spinning yet. Um, I finished, you know, four skeins of yarn, uh, two from this sweater and two skeins worth, I mean, one super giant skein and one little skein for the tessellated project in a period of about two and a half weeks. And that's really productive spinning for me. Um, and I'm still determined to finish up this sweater spin. I think, you know, I'm halfway through my fifth round of chemo right now, and I need to get my spinning wheel out of my bedroom, which is where I moved it for Tour de Fleece, and out here into more public spaces um, so that I can spin while interacting with my family as opposed to spinning while hiding alone in my bedroom. Um, because the second thing that sort of pulled me away from spinning as I started to feel better during that round of chemo is that you just, you don't want to be hidden alone in your room. You want to be with your kids and with your, my parents are living with us right now and with my husband. You just want to be where the people are. Or you want to take your wheel outside and enjoy the sunshine while you spin. So, uh, Tour de Fleece though, in short, was a mixed bag this year. Uh, overall though, I'm super glad that I tried. 
I know I will get the sweater spin done and uh, probably have a little video on that um, when the sweater spin is completed. And now it's just going to be maybe, maybe I need to complete the sweater spin, you know, before the end of chemotherapy. Maybe it wasn't a, a one chemotherapy round sweater spin, it's a two chemotherapy round sweater spin. Which I guess then brings me to the second point that I wanted to cover in this video was just a little update on how my health has been, how things have been going this summer with chemo. Um, so I do have, uh, if we've made it this far in the video and you don't know yet, I do have HER2 positive uh, stage 2B breast cancer that I discovered, uh, well I didn't discover, that was discovered back in March and I'm currently uh, five and a half rounds deep into six rounds of TCHP chemotherapy. Um, I'll link my sort of cancer playlist below. I've got videos um, talking about my diagnosis, talking about the treatment plan um, that you can check out if you're more interested. Um, chemotherapy has been a ride so far. Uh, what I do is I go on a Saturday every three weeks for a transfusion of all four of my drugs. Um, and then you basically spend the next three weeks um, going through the, the mud with the negative symptoms and side effects and then slowly re regaining strength and getting back to yourself just in time to start your next round. So rounds one was, you know, a little rough and some surprising symptoms that I didn't expect, um, but manageable. And then each subsequent round has sort of hit me harder and more aggressively um, during that first week of the crap, <laughs> the crappy parts, than each previous round has. And, you know, I've been, I think round, yeah, so round four, uh, I did end up having to go to emerge um, for some IV fluids because I had just dehydrated down to the point where I was not keeping up with my hydration. Um, and then we went in, had two liters of IV fluids run, and I was you know, back on my feet and a totally new person. But you know, it wasn't a hospitalization, it was like a you know, quick two hour jaunt to the hospital, if you will. Um, but round five, this one that I'm currently on, uh, properly landed me hospitalized. So if you follow me along on Instagram, you may have known that I posted that I, um, Thursday, Friday had, you know, quite bad GI symptoms, not to overshare there, but, uh, you know, the type of symptoms where you might not be able to keep anything in your body and was ending up quite dehydrated. And also like, it just, it, it didn't seem that there was any sign that it was likely to improve. Um, and then I popped a fever and that was the nail in the coffin because chemotherapies can really dramatically um, reduce your white blood cell counts, specifically your neutrophils, which are a critical part of your body's innate immune system. So in the absence of neutrophils, you know, the commensal bacteria that would normally live in your gut can suddenly have the ability to infect and become problematic for you. So we suspect that's what happened because uh, we got to emerge concerned about the fever and the dehydration and the, uh, the worsening GI symptoms. And when they did blood work, we found that my neutrophil count was 0 0.2, which is to say basically zero, which means I had what they call febrile neutropenia, which means basically you have a fever and you have no neutrophils. So we need to admit you to hospital so that you don't suddenly get much, much, much worse, uh, potentially septic, um, you know, because your body just doesn't have the capacity to fight any kind of infection at that point. So we admitted me to hospital Saturday night. We, uh, we the, my capable team, my doctor, uh, put me on broad spectrum antibiotics uh, intravenously every six hours. And those antibiotics really started turning things around for me almost immediately. Uh, the other thing that they did was give me an additional two shots of um, filgrastin or Nulesta. Uh, this is an injection that I take once usually after each round of chemotherapy. 
um, to try and promote more neutrophil growth. And they gave me another two shots of that over the course of a couple days. And long story short, I was finally able to be sent home just on oral antibiotics. Uh, my neutrophil counts came back up um, from 0 0.0, no, so from 0.2, we're up in around like 7. So, you know, a dramatic response in my neutrophil, um, neutrophil count. So I have an immune system again, which is good. And I'm just very happy to be home. So, yeah, moral of the story is I'm not looking forward to my final round six of chemotherapy, uh, which is due to start in about a week and a half, exactly a week and a half, on August 12th. Um, because I don't want to have another hospitalization, so we're going to see my oncologist next week and maybe we can come up with uh, a strategy to try to avoid a repeat of that scenario. But on the other hand, at least it is the last of my six rounds of chemotherapy. So yeah, kind of happy to be back at home now, happy to be feeling well enough to be doing the things that I like and to be, you know, spending time with my family and my kids and really kind of dreading round six slash ready for round six. I'm just so ready to be done with chemotherapy in general this summer. So yeah. Um, hopefully that wasn't too entirely too rambling. I did want to say a quick thank you um, to everybody who reached out and commented on my posts about knitting in hospital, being hospitalized. Um, every time I post anything related to my cancer, uh, the response that I get from my fiber community online just really, it just, it brings me a lot of joy and support and just general goodness. And uh, there are certainly times during cancer therapy and cancer treatment where you need more joy and support and general goodness. So just a huge heartfelt, truly thank you um, for everybody who takes the time to reach out. It, it truly does mean a lot to me. Um, yeah, just it, it really does. And uh, a second thank you. We've got a big uptake in new views and new followers here on my channel. If you've made it to the end of this video, then you really are one of the special ones. A huge thank you to everybody who's taken the time to subscribe. Uh, it's another thing that is getting me through cancer this summer is feeling like I'm achieving something here by uh, posting more regular content. Uh, I'm feeling creatively fulfilled just by by the content that I'm currently creating, but also um, just, you know, you're lying there in the hospital bed, but you're having ideas for future videos that you'd like to do or fiber experiments that you'd like to, I'd like to share with you all. And it, that level of creative fulfillment this summer has been another thing that has been super important and helpful um, to me on this cancer journey. So thank you if you have discovered me in the last uh, couple of months. And, uh, and you've opted to click follow along, it means the world to me. Um, and watching the growth on this channel and sort of seeing potential for it in the future um, is really creatively fulfilling me in a way that I didn't anticipate. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I've got so very much more planned for you all here. Um, with you know some obvious hurdles in my future again with the breast cancer treatment but uh yeah thank you thank you thank you thank you so uh that's all i got for now i hope you're enjoying whatever um fiber arts craft you might be working on right now whether that's spinning knitting crochet weaving sewing quilting i mean whatever it is you do with fiber because after all i mean this is my living room but this is the art lab bye for now